بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول. It is narrated by Ibn Ishaq, the viceroy of southern Arabia, Abraha al Ashram, built a huge and very lofty church and wrote to the king of Abyssinia. That I have built you a church that is unprecedented, and I am intending to divert pilgrimage from Mecca to Abyssinia. When the Arabs heard of the letter of Abraha sent to the king of Abyssinia, a man from Kinana got angry. He set out till he reached the church where he yearned on its walls. The news reached Abraha, who asked about the doer. He was answered, This was done by one of those Arabs who performed pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca, and when he heard of your declared intention, that you would divert pilgrimage from their sacred house to your church. Upon hearing this, Abraha burst with rage and took oath that he would demolish the Kaaba. Then he ordered his people to get prepared for war. The Arabs heard the news and they were terrified, but they decided to fight him when the news was affirmed that he intended to destroy the sacred house. On his way to Mecca, Abraha sent a cavalry dispatch ahead which seized some of the Arabs' property, including 200 camels belonging to Abdul Muttalib the chief of the Quraysh and the Prophet's grandfather. Later on, Abdul Muttalib met with Abraha at his camp to ask for the compensation of his 200 camels, but did not ask him to leave the Kaaba alone. Abraha was surprised at this request. Then Abdul Muttalib answered, I am the master of the camels, whereas the Kaaba, house of worship, has its lord to defend it. Abraha said, no one can defend it from me. Abdul Muttalib then answered, you are on your own. Finally, Abraha gave him the camels back. When Abdul Muttalib returned home, he told the Qurayshites about what happened between him and Abraha and ordered the Qurayshites to evacuate Mecca and move to the mountains. Then he accompanied with some men, stood holding the ring of the Kaaba's door, invoking Allah and seeking his aid against Abraha and his troops. He then set out with his companions to the mountains, seeking shelter and awaiting for what would happen next. In the morning, Abraha got prepared to enter Mecca and got his elephant and troops prepared. The elephants, however, when pointed towards Mecca, they refused to move. Thereupon, Allah the Almighty sent upon them birds from the seaside resembling hawks. Each bird held three stones, one in his beak and two in his two legs. The stones were like chickpeas and lentils, and none from among the Abyssinians was hit by a stone but that he was killed. The birds did not hit them all. The rest of them fled away trying to get back to Yemen. The Abyssinians fled away while death pursuing them on every path and in every way, and Abraha was hit with a stone as well. They carried him and his body began to tear apart after part till they reached Sana'a. At the same year of this great incident, Prophet Muhammad wasallam was born. Some scholars say that it took place two years prior to his birth. Regardless, let this serve as a reminder of how great the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And if he wants, he can change the world today. He is the creator of this world and has asked us to live according to the rule of Islam, following the methodology of his messenger Muhammad wasallam. You must study the message of Islam in its entirety, not just the five pillars, but all its aspects, economic, judicial, political, and more, and work to implement this in our lives. The Ummah, since the dawn of Islam, until today has been under constant pressure from the Kuffar. The most important thing to remember is that Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the most powerful, will always be on our side. The whole world could be against us, but if we stand upright with taqwa and firm belief in our creator, no one can defeat us. We want this deen to be victorious, and through the many challenges that we are bound to face, only with the will of Allah will we succeed. O oh Allah, all the praises are for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth. You are the keeper of the heavens and the earth. You are the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is therein. You are the truth, and your promise is the truth, and your speech is the truth, and meeting you is the truth, and paradise is the truth, and hell fire is the truth, and all the prophets are the truth, and the hour is the truth. O oh Allah, I surrender to you, and believe in you, and depend on you, and repent to you, and in your cause I fight, and with your orders I rule. It is you whom I worship. None has the right to be worshipped except you.